The cycloid, also referred to as the Helen of geometry, is one of the most famous and fascinating curves in mathematics. Here's an example of the graph of a cycloid. In general, a cycloid is given by the parametric equations, x equals a times the quantity t minus sine t, and y equals a times the quantity one minus cosine t, where a is any constant. For this particular graph, a equals one, and therefore these are the parametric equations for this cycloid. The cycloid is the curve traced out by the path of a fixed point on a circle rolling smoothly along a straight line, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. If we go back to the parametric equations just for a moment, in this form here, A is the radius of the circle that's rolling smoothly along a horizontal axis. One of the first publications that mentions the cycloid was by Charles Bouvels in 1501. In the 17th century, there were many arguments about who discovered what about the cycloid, which is where the curve gets the name, the Helen of geometry. And now let's use a Desmos animation to view the trace of a cycloid curve. Here we see a circle rolling smoothly along the horizontal axis. The orange point is the fixed point on the circle that traces out the cycloid curve. So the blue curve is the cycloid curve. And now let's look at some interesting properties about the cycloid curve. First, the arc length from one rotation of the circle is four times the diameter of the circle. So this highlighted arc length is formed from one rotation of the circle along the horizontal axis. This arc length is equal to four times the diameter of the circle. Notice how here the diameter is equal to two units. So the green arc length equals four times the diameter, or in this case four times two, which is equal to eight units. What's interesting about this is that the formula for the circumference of a circle, which is the distance around the circle, is equal to pi times the diameter, or two times pi times the radius, and notice how the arc length of the curve is independent of pi, meaning pi does not appear in the arc length, though it would appear in the length around the circle. Next, the area under the curve formed by one revolution or one rotation of the circle is three times the area of the rotating circle. Remember, the area of a circle equals pi times the radius squared. And now looking at the graph below, one rotation or one revolution of the circle would give us this arc length, and therefore the shaded area is equal to three times the area of this circle. So the area is equal to three times pi times r squared. Notice how the radius of the circle is one unit, which means the shaded area is three times pi times one squared, which equals three pi, and this is area, and therefore this would be square units. And again, this property holds true for any cycloid. For the next property, when the circle is rotating at a constant rate, the fixed point on the circle is not. The fixed point travels at different speeds as it travels through one full rotation of the circle. So even though the circle rotates at a constant rate, the point that traces out the cycloid curve is traveling at different speeds throughout each rotation of the circle. And finally, for the last property, which I find the most interesting, if the cycloid curve is turned into a ramp as pictured here, and marbles or ball bearings are released at different points on the curve, they will all arrive at the bottom of the curve at the same time. So if these were all ball bearings on the curve, and we release them at the same time, they would all arrive at the bottom at exactly the same time. So I hope you can now agree that the cycloid curve is quite an interesting and fascinating curve. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.